Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve best time to buy and sell a stock number two. So I did solve the first one of this problem and the second one is actually pretty similar to it as well. So this time we are once again given an array of prices. So at the ith index of this array, we're given a particular price of a given stock. And for this stock, we want to know what's the maximum profit that we could possibly achieve. But in this case, we are allowed to do as many transactions as we want. We can buy and sell as many times as we want. Before we only had one single transaction, this time we can do multiple transactions. So they give us this example input array and they say the max profit we could possibly do is seven. That's if we buy on day two, sell on day three, buy again on day four, sell on day five, and that's it. And in that case, we would get a total max profit of seven. But what's the algorithm to determine when we're gonna buy and sell? Well, let me show you, and I'll show you why it's so simple when we draw a picture of what exactly we are gonna be doing to this prices array. So stock prices are best represented when you draw a graph, right? So we have the time axis, the day, and we have the price as the y axis. So looking at this picture, forget about the algorithm. When would we want to buy and when would we want to sell if we could do as many transactions as we wanted? And what would be the max profit that we could possibly get in that case? We'll take a look on day one. The price is seven. Should we buy or should we sell? Well, looking at this, it's about to go down really significantly. So why would I buy over here when I could actually buy over here? We're on a decline, right? Never buy at as it's going down. But over here, since we can predict the future, we see that on this day, the price is this much. But since we can predict the future, we see, well, we know for sure the stock's about to go up. So definitely buy over here, right? Okay, so we buy on this day. Well, when are we gonna sell? Once again, we can predict the future. We wanna keep, we wanna hold, 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 and here we see we're at a local maximum, right? How do we know we're at a local maximum? Because the next value happens to be lower than this value. Since I can predict the future, I'm definitely about to sell right now because over here, we know the stock is gonna go down a little bit, so I'll rebuy at a lower price. Buy low, sell high, right? This is basic stocks, but if only if it were this easy in real life. So we sell high, right? But so we bought at this day, then we sold at this day. What was the profit of this transaction? Well, we well, we're just gonna take the difference, right? Five minus one is gonna be four. So, so far our profit is four, but since we sold now, now the stock is about to go down, but we don't suffer any losses from this decline, right? Because we're, we're not holding any more. And you probably get the picture at this point, but let's just continue until these last two transactions. So now we see, okay, we're at a price of three. Is the stock about to go down or is it about to go up? We predict the future. We know it's about to go up. So definitely buy on this day. We buy and we, we keep holding. We keep holding until we get to the next day, right? Because we know it's about to go up. And once again, we predict the future. We know the stock's about to go down. This is the maximum. Since we see the next value is smaller than the current value, we definitely sell now. So we bought here, we sold here. That's six minus three. And that's another profit of three. So the total profit so far is seven. And now we know that the stock is about to go down to this value. But as you can see, what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding every increase of the stock price to our total profit. So every time the, the array values are in increasing order, we're gonna be adding those differentials between those increasing or prices to our total profit. And so you can see that this can be done in big O of n time because we're just gonna be iterating through the array. We're gonna see, okay, the first value is a seven. So we have no profit yet. The next value is a one. So it went down. We didn't get any profit from that. Oh, the next value is a five. That's bigger than the previous value of one. So there's a profit we're gonna be adding. Then we're gonna see a three. Okay, three is less than five, no profit there. Okay, now we get a six. Six is greater than three, so some profit there. And then the next value four is less than six. So we're just gonna be making comparisons and iterating through the array, big O of n time, no extra memory needed. So the memory complexity is just big O of one. And you can even use this algorithm in real life if you wanna make some money. Actually, don't do that because you'll probably lose all your money unless you're investing in Dogecoin. But with that being said, let's jump into the code now. It's pretty short. So we are gonna have a single variable to maintain the current profit, the total profit we have so far. It's initially gonna be zero. 
and we are going to have a single pointer i which is going to tell us where we currently are and we're going to actually skip the first value of the array so we're going to start from index one all the way to the end of the prices input array the reason we're skipping the zeroth index is because for every i we are going to compare it to the previous position we know that zero does not have a previous position so therefore we have to skip it and what we're gonna check is just like we did in the picture. So the prices at this index, if it happens to be greater than the prices at the previous index, I minus one, in that case, that means we have a profit. So let's go ahead and compute that profit and add it to our total profit. So how can we compute the profit? We're gonna get prices at this index subtracted by the price at the previous index because that's gonna tell us the total profit from that one basically the over a period of one day how much profit we got right from the current day compared to the previous day and that's literally it and if if there's happens to be no profit meaning if the stock is always in decreasing order then obviously we wouldn't have any total profit so we wouldn't add anything to our result but after that loop is done executing we'll have stored the total profit and we can return it just like this so you might be able to get tripped up by this problem if you don't draw a picture. That's why I like drawing pictures because it does become pretty simple after that. So this one was a pretty short one. I hope that it was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It supports the channel a lot and I'll hopefully see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.